Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the webinar for with Adobe XD, the Take Your Design Systems to the Next Level. We've got with us Jamie and Paula, who's going to walk, Paula is going to walk us through design systems. So much good knowledge to share. She gave us a sneak peek. Um, I'm Jessica from Design Lab. I'm just here to intro and give you a little bit of a rundown, and then I'm going to let them take it away. Um, please pop over in the chat, say hi. Y'all are already on it. I love it. Say hi where you're from. Um, we'd love to hear from you. <clears throat> As we go along, if you have questions, please make sure to move over to the questions tab versus chat. I would hate for you to get lost. See how quickly all this is going to get lost. <laughs> please put your questions in the questions tab. Um, and Jamie, myself, Paula will um, answer those as we go or at the end, depending. Um, but yeah, we are so excited for you all to be here. And I'm going to let Jamie and Paula take it from here. Wow. We have people from all over, like Bangladesh, Mexico, New Jersey, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Sweden. Oh, my goodness. Canada. Welcome, everyone, to our session. I'm excited that you're here. My name is Jamie. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So just bear with me one second. Okay. Can we see the screen, folks? We're good. I can't see the chat. Jessica, are we good? No, we can't see it yet for some reason. We can't see it yet. Okay, hold on. Let me try again. Let me try one more time. I, I swear I just tested this, right? <laughs> we did just test it. <laughs> it did just work, y'all. <laughs> Okay, so now it's uh, Jessica giving me, it's like locked out. I can't share. So maybe you can try sharing or someone or Paula. That's weird. It's just, I'm locked out. Okay, wait, here we go. It just took a second. I'm in. <laughs> it needed to think. Panic. Let me try this. Yes? Yes. All right. Nothing like some nice technical difficulties in the morning, people. It makes you, up. It makes you feel alive. <laughs> Give Jamie a break, universe. Yes, here we are. This is me. I'm Jamie. I'm a strategic development manager from Adobe. And I'm so excited that we have partnered with Design Lab for this awesome workshop today. I want to talk about something that's really cool, okay? Adobe XD is offering all eligible enrolled Design Lab students, a one-year subscription to Adobe XD. Yes, you heard that right. So if you're interested in using XD throughout your course or to make a portfolio project and you're a Design Lab student in the UX course, definitely check that out and take advantage of it. If you haven't already gotten it and you haven't redeemed it yet, go redeem that sucker. Definitely try it out, especially for this workshop today. If you want to follow along with Paula and try some of these features, you can do that with your free subscription to XD. So you get all the features. There's no limitations. Um, you'll be able to add as many collaborators as you want. You'll be able to share as many prototypes as you want. Don't worry, folks, if you're not a Design Lab student yet, um, there is a starter plan. And I will put the link to the starter plan in the chat for everybody who um, is just thinking about maybe joining a UX bootcamp or thinking about UX design, we do have a starter plan for you that you can try some of the features um, in XD. So definitely, hey, Design Lab, shout out. We love being a partner with you. Definitely take advantage of this amazing complimentary XD. And don't forget another benefit of being a UX bootcamp student at Design Lab is that you get to participate in our creative jam yeah, you heard that right. We only have three students from Design Lab signed up so far. We need way more representation than that Design Lab. You can do better. Come join us at the UX Bootcamp with Scholastic Books in November. This is an opportunity for you to use XD, partner up with a teammate. You need to have one other person on your team and make a cool project for an actual customer, Scholastic Books. I don't know about you. I'm a little older. I remember Scholastic Books when I was a kid. I'm sure a lot of you do. It's going to be an amazing challenge, live streamed. We're going to have celebrity judges. Um, it's going to be awesome. There's tons of prizes. If you win first place with your team, you each will get a $500 gift card. What? Cash? Yeah, sign me up. If you submit a project, even submitting a project that meets the criteria, you will get free Creative Cloud 
for three months. Yes. Even just submitting a project, you still get a prize. I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. So if you're a design lab student, you're in a UX, the UX Bootcamp, go right now and register. I'll put the registration link in after. And last but not least, don't fit. If you are not in a UX Bootcamp and you can't join us for the jam, you can come to Adobe Max. What? Yes, Adobe Max, folks. This is the event of the year. This is the creativity conference. We do everything during Max. It's completely virtual this year. It's completely free. You can come and watch sessions um, about anything in XD. All of our new feature releases for all of our Adobe products will be brought to the main stage. It will be hosted by Keenan from Saturday Night Live. It's going to be our host. It's going to be an awesome event. So it's totally free. It's open to everyone. There are sessions in lang different languages and different time zones, and you can come back and watch them later. Don't miss this. You must register. All right. I have said my two cents. I'm going to stop sharing. That is my big hype reel for Adobe XD and Design Lab. Y'all, thanks for being here. I'm going to hand it over to Paula. She's one of our amazing XD instructors. She works at Mattel. She's so nice. We love Paula. Let's bring Paula on the screen. Come on, Paula. Thank you, Jamie. Yay. All right. Yay. Here. I'll be in the chat, you guys. I'll be helping with questions. I'll see you soon. Yeah. There were some questions on the XD subscription. So I'm going to post want. links, and that might be something Jessica can handle with the subscription side because that goes through Design Lab. You must be a Design Lab student. Um, all the information will come from Jessica on how to get that if you are a Design Lab student. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paula. Um, go to Adobe Max. I went since I was a college student, and I go every year, and I signed up for it this year too. So, you know, Adobe Max is great. So, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Let me. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, sorry, we can see it. It's looking good. Yes. <laughs> cool. I know I was like busy starting to type in the chat, but you look great, Paula. We're ready. <laughs> Thank you. So today we're gonna go talk about design systems uh, in Adobe XD. And like Jamie introduced me, I'm Paula. Uh, I'm a lead UX designer at Mattel. I also teach at Art Center College of Design, uh, which is in the visual interaction design emphasis of the graphic design department, and also an Adobe XD instructor. And uh, that's how I'm here today. So uh, at Mattel, I'm part of the Mattel Connected Products platform team, and we design experience around connected products from brands like Fisher Price and Mattel Games. And these are the two apps that we are currently working on and launched. Uh, the, this is the Bunny on the Smart Connect app, which is a product we launched like last year. Um, and then it features a sleep schedule and customized soothing. Um, the Smart Connect app supports about 10 products right now. And we have a robust uh, components and patterns library in Adobe XD as part of our design system. And uh, this is how we kind of keep our documentation uh, for designers and our team. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's talk about design systems. So what is design systems? A design system is a complete set of standards intended to manage design at scale using reusable components and patterns. So um, like in the Smart Connect app, we have style guides and components, and this allows us um, to have um, fast designs because we have something to go off and then like not go through like a visual um, approval system. And it creates a unified language within be and between cross-functional teams. Like when you look at all Adobe products and 
websites, they have a unified language, even though like different designers and different teams design them. And these are uh, why we need design systems. Um, elements of design systems include style guides, uh, which include the principles, the branding, which includes the color, typography, trademarks, logos, and print media, and also content. Uh, that is like tone of voice, language recommendations, you know, how your copy should look like and sound like, and that's sort right. um, Also includes the component library, which are the reusable UI elements that I shared with you. And then a pattern library, which is the UI element groupings and layouts. So like a component library becomes a pattern library. And then Finally, uh, the most important part is a team that manages the design system. And uh, a design system requires continuous maintenance and oversight to ensure that they don't become outdated, obsolete, or overcrowded with redundant entries or submissions. And uh, this is like a job of its own. And if you are really interested in branding and UX and UI all together, this uh, design system team would be one of the teams you could apply to. So let's look at an example. Can you guys hear the chat mic sound? Because I could hear it. And I hope I'm not making it loud with it. So here's an example. This is Spectrum, and this is Adobe's design system. Oh. And it's really documented well in the website. Uh, if you do a spectrum search, you'll be able to come to this page. I'll put the link in the chat for you, Paula. And this is yes. the best design system in the world too, by the way, just saying. <laughs> yes, it's really nice. And the way it's uh, organized is really great as well. Um, principles is one of the most important guiding uh, words for your design system. And that's why it's like on the top of the list. and. Adobe says being rational, human focused, and it means like um, they're, you know, contextual. You know, they give users what they need when they need it. And then uh, the foundations and the content is the style guys I just mentioned before, and that includes like the color, typography, motion iconography, illustration, and like how. Adobe takes on inclusive design, uh, visualization, and also design tokens, um, if that's something you want to uh, look at, take a closer look at. And also content is part of uh, the style guide as well. And then going into components, today's uh, best part of today's uh, webinar. So buttons are kind of part of components and you know we define this um, and, and it's important to define the different edge cases that you need in a button uh, in your design system. So those could include, there's a long list if you go to the website, but these are the three I chose to show you guys. And these are like um, buttons are flexible and width. So sometimes a button could be, um, absolute in the width, but Adobe Spectrum uh, buttons become wider as they the words become wider. And they also have a minimum width set. And also when the text is too long, they will make it two uh, lines. And there's a lot of text overflow when you do localization in different languages. And this is you know, one of the things we always have to cover. And the, and the patterns are kind of like the cards that you see on Adobe stuff. Um, these are flexible containers. And when you are defining like a design system for cards, you, know, you have to define the anatomy and what components you're using and how you're using it and you know, how the design works. Other well-known um, design systems are the Apple iOS human guidelines, Google material design, IBM carbon design, and Alexa's, Amazon's Alexa presentation language. And they're all available in Adobe XD format uh, for you to use. 
in the link below, which is the UI Kits website. I'll post that link for you too. Paula. Thank you. I'm here for you. I've got you. <laughs> I'll send you I'll send that you guys can all download these and get familiar with design systems. Yeah. Yes. Cool. So that was my blurb on design systems. And now I'm going to show you an example of design systems. Are there any questions I should answer before I move on? No, not yet. I'm seeing oh, a lot of excitement oh. from folks about seeing your work you did at Mattel. I think people really like mm -hmm. to see in context how you're using XD at your company today to build that awesome app, which is incredible. Um, and then also how Spectrum, how we use uh, XD to make our own design system Spectrum here at Adobe. So I think that was really cool. Um, and we are ready to actually learn now about yes. XD and how components play a part in these awesome experiences. Nice. Awesome, Paula. We're ready. <laughs> so this is RM. Uh, this is a demo kit we made uh, at the XD instructors team with Jamie. And um, this is for demo purposes, so it's not a connected live app. But you can see that I have a components uh, library here that you could view. Then here I have like uh, defined containers, which are patterns that we talked about, and uh, typography and colors and other components as well. And these, this is where I keep my main components because as a designer, I want to be able to change all of my components and all of my designs uh, at once. So let's talk about components. Let's go zoom into one of our components. And then uh, in components, uh, you know that these are components because it has a green outline on it. And there is a concept of a main component and an instance of a component where uh, the main component has a solid green uh, square. And when you use an instance of a component. I'm just gonna copy and paste one. You see an outlined square on the top left. So a main component means um, when I change something on the main component, all the instances will change like the main component, but the instance of a component won't change uh, the main component. So this is like um, a great way to, you, you know, um, make changes faster in your designs. So to see how this could work is, you see this live feed button that I was playing with. Now, you see that this was used in uh, a lot of the pages. You see it here, here, here. And when I change, And let's say our customer wants a rectangle button instead of a rounded rectangle. I'm gonna come in here and change the roundness of this button. And then you see that all the buttons have changed where this component is used like an instance. We could do this for colors uh, and text in our components uh, panel, which you'll see on the left. And we'll go over more in more detail when we open up a new file. So that was Arium. And then we're going to uh, go to a new file and try to uh, recreate a card from the Arium file. So opening a new file, there are multiple ways to do in XZ. You know, we have our file and new, your Apple new, or you could go to the home, which will give you all the options that you could make. So I'm gonna pick the iPhone X, uh, which is like the standard size we designed in, which will open up a new file. I'm gonna go over the XD interface really quickly for uh, those of you who are new to 
Adobe XP. So if you look at here, you have our home where we were able to open a new document, but you could open your recent document, your cloud documents from uh, tapping on the screen or button. And then there's the design panel, the prototype panel, and the share panel. So design is where you design your elements, and prototype is where you prototype your elements. And then share is where you could make links to share out to your collaborators or stakeholders. Uh, the doc part is the name of your file. And you see there's a cloud icon, which means the uh, file is being saved on the Adobe Cloud. Uh, this allows uh, for you to get this file in any device that you log into. And um, it's like using a cloud storage. You could also save it as a local file if by going to file and save as a local document, which will give you um, ways to save on your computer. You could look at my crazy finder. <laughs> uh, you could also uh, enable co-editing and invite collaborators to your file, which you have to save as a cloud to do by using this icon. And then you could connect your uh, phone to preview your designs in your phone. Um, and also this plus button is the desktop preview where you could uh, try your designs on the desktop. And going into the design, you'll see your tools where you could uh, do the select. And select is very contextual. Most of the thing uh, elements are contextual in XD. So when you select the artboard, you'll be selecting the whole artboard. When you're selecting um, like the element, it'll be just the element. And the properties panel will change depending on what you are using. You have your rectangle tool where you draw rectangles. If you hold shift, you'll draw squares. And you could um, use like a line, transform, layout, appearance, change colors, give it roundedness, and have inner shadows, drop shadows, background blurs, and etc. You have your circle and the polygon, uh, which are could be many sided. You have your lines. Uh, you have the pencil where you could uh, just draw lines. Then you have your uh, text tool, which you could type. And then since it's contextual, it'll talk about your fonts. And uh, you can change your size, the weight size, and you know, everything you could change on a text, on a document. Also, there's the artboards. Uh, if you click on the artboards toolkit tool, uh, it'll give you all the different sizes uh, that are standard uh, right now, which include like the mobiles, the tablets, the web and desktop, and social media. So I love to create my Instagram posts on XD to, uh, I will just export it as a PNG and send it out airdrop through my phone and post it on Instagram through my phone. And your uh, normal zoom in and zoom in out. And then this is your um, document assets where you could you will have your components, including your colors, character styles, styles, and the other components. Um, you could access your other design libraries by going into libraries. And then you have your layers, which you could click on an artboard and then it'll show your artboard and you could rename your artboards in your layers and all your elements as well. And the last one is the plugins panel, which you could add a plugin uh, by choosing and I have this long of a list that I use. And I think my favorites icons for and presentation, quick mock-up, and uh, Stark for inclusivity. I'm well. gonna put the link to the modular plugins right there yes. in there. That is my favorite one too, Paula. The presentation one, quick mock-up, and whiteboard. Those are awesome plugins. 
don't worry if you guys don't see any when you open up your XD. You have to put your own favorites in there. You got to go look for them, discover them, and add them yourself. Yes. <laughs> I know. I get that question all the time. Like, why don't I see any? Don't see any? It's like, well, you haven't added any yet. You, you got to follow the instructions Paula just showed you to discover plugins and add them. Yes. Um, the prototype is really based on kind of connecting two uh, screens together. And the basic idea is kind of having one screen and you are taking, adding a pro, pro interaction, which when you add one, it gives you all the options either to tap, drag, time, keys, and voice. And I'm just going to do a tap. And then when I tap on it, take me to my ASD-1 and transition between it. So a transition will kind of just be like a dissolve. So if you look at this, if I click on it, it just dissolved into the second screen. But if I want a different kind of transition, I want to auto animate, which is super special to Adobe XD. It'll uh, animate the screens between. And it'll look like it's actually moving. So this is really uh, nice when you are kind of trying to create a small animation. Um, and you can use rotate to like do rounded stuff and uh, examples are available on the Adobe XD website. So let's get started with some components. Any questions before I move on to components on the inner you know, there was some questions just about libraries in general. I thought this would be a good one for you, Paula, to answer on screen. Um, but someone yes. wanted to know, do you have a separate library for mobile components and one for desktop? Or what's the best way to start organizing once you've made them? I know this might be later on mm -hmm. when we learn more about components, but I just thought that was an interesting, like, even just getting started, how do you organize yourself? Would you? Yes. Uh, I think it depends on the size of the project. So if the project size is kind of big, like Smart Connect, uh, I do have separate libraries for new components we have for new products. So it really depends. Like if it's kind of small, I would put everything together in one file. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that makes sense. It depends on how big your design system is going to end up being. I've seen some huge ones, you know, and maybe you do yeah. want to break those out into separate libraries. I would say try and keep them in one. I know, Paula, we just released in XD44 the ability to group different mm -hmm. elements within your assets. So you can make a group of components for mobile and a group for desktop now, which is going to keep them nice and organized. Yeah. And that just came out this week. So update to XD44 if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, I like your idea and suggestion, Paula. I think one just to keep everything in one central place is easier, um, but mm -hmm. you can break it out into separate libraries if you need to, based on your yes. use case, right? So if you look at my libraries, I have a main toolkit for just like the Smart Connect app, and then I have another toolkit for product specific ones here, because our funny. toolkit is so big. Yeah, But that is before we had groupings of components. Right. right. <laughs> so, so that you guys we had a sneak peek as to how Mattel is organized. Their yes. stuff. So that's really cool that, you know, you're breaking it out depending on the use case there. One other question that I think is really good, especially for beginners, Paula, is about how do you know which artboard size to choose? Like which phone hmm. size and... There's so many options. So what's your recommendation for someone who's a beginner just getting started? Do they have to design for every screen size? No, normally I start at the 375 by 812. Uh, that size um, what are the scales up to the Pro Max well. And then uh, and then I will the, another size I will design for is for the Pixel. So Android and iPhone. But yeah. if you're an iPhone user, I would do iPhone. If you're a Pixel user or an Android user, I would do Android. You know, what I tell people all the time is that there's an infinite amount of screen sizes out yes. there nowadays. It's really impossible <laughs> to design for every single one. So pick one 
and have a range in mind, like small, medium, large, you know, any sort of yes. small screen size will kind of adapt to most small screen sizes, phones, et cetera, and so on. So you really kind of need, I would say three, a small, a medium, and a large, and in design around that. And yes. the last question I'm gonna take right now, I'm gonna let Paula keep doing her thing, is the perfect segue. Josh Fee uh, asks, is it necessary to even create components? Even we're designing for just a few screens. So I would say the answer is yes. And you're gonna see why components are so powerful and you're gonna end up using them way more than you think you are, even if you're just designing one landing page, like a long scrollable page. Um, so that's the greatest question. Perfect timing for that question. Mm -hmm. Paul is going to show you right now how powerful components are and how you can make them. And you're going to see why you're going to want to use components too. Take it away. Yeah. Paula. Thank you. <laughs> so I could tell you about when I start making components uh, first. And I think the best time to start making components is when you have to repeatedly change an element because you have uh, multiple uh, uses of that element. And even though if you're on a wireframe stage, I start using components at that point already because I am too lazy to change uh, things <laughs> manually. So. So I'm gonna try making this uh, with components for us today. And I just brought this from the RM page and this is a component, but I ungrouped them so we could uh, play off it. So I want to create the background card first. So I'm gonna create a rectangle and the size I'm not gonna to care too much about because uh, we're not making a perfect design uh, during the demo. So I have a rectangle, I made a square, it's 175 by 175, and I want it to be a rounded one. So I could round it by uh, dragging this corner radius or changing it here. So let's say I want a 24 radius here. And then um, I'm gonna create the heading for this card. And I'm using Acumen Pro um, because it has many, uh, many different options for it. And I think 17 is, is a good size for like a heading size uh, for something like this. Uh, my students asked me what's the smallest size I could use on a phone screen. And I go, if you want them to be red, hopefully something more like 14, 15, and then uh, if you don't care if they don't have to read it, you could go as small as nine points. So Paula, what you're doing right now is just designing. It starts yes. with a design. A component starts with something. So what Paula is showing us, this isn't a component yet. She's making something that she's going to like. So she's making this little card. So we're going to watch her as she designs first. Yes. And then I'm going to create a favorite icon, which I want to use a star this time. So I'm going to go to the polygon and then I'm going to create a triangle. And I want to make the three sides into five sides. No roundedness, but I want the star ratio to be 60%. So this is how you create a component or try a star in uh, Adobe XD. And then I want this to have a toggle state. It means when I click on it, I want it to be favorited. And if I click on it, I don't want it to be, uh, I want to unfavorite. And to do that, you want to use components. And Adobe has pre-built component states that you will let you do this easily. So to make this start into a component, I'm going to, uh, well, I could do three different things. I could click on the add here or click on the add here under the panel or do Apple K on a Mac to create a component. And I always want to uh, keep my files clean and I will 
name, change the name of this component to favorite. And then uh, by default, we have a default state and I want to add a toggle state to it. So if you add a plus under the component, you'll see you could create a regular new state, a hover state and a toggle state. I'm gonna add a toggle state and you can rename this if you want to, but I will not. And now when I click on it, I want the start to become yellow. And when I put it back to the default state and check the desktop um, preview and click on the start, you can see now I have a component with the state. And this is one of the great reasons like Danny said you might want to start using components even though you have one uh, landing page design. Next, I want to uh, make a button with the text with the speed test. And I will do that by creating a rectangle again. Now I want a rounded rectangle. I like rounded rectangles, so I'm gonna create another rounded rectangle. And I'm gonna use the text tool to add a label to the button. I'm gonna just select, and then I want these to be um, centered. So I'm gonna say, uh, you see like XD has guides on, you know, how far your elements are from the other element that is next to it. So here, like, um, I want to center it visually. So it has seven, pixels on the top and five pixels on the bottom. But you see that uh, text has some space underneath it. This is a good time to bring up a question that I think we should answer live, Paula. Um, okay. We have a question here from Muhammad. Uh, do you build your components with a grid or any other mm. grid system and rules? So you were talking about spacing and pixels. So we do have the ability to show a grid. And I think, Paula, it would be yes. great if you showed that. So yes, you could have a grid. So let me close mine. And when you go to your artboard, select your artboard. Here you see a grid option where you could uh, select it on and you could have like a layout grid uh, and you could add more columns to it and uh, make the width smaller or you know have less margin i think 16 is great and you could also have a square grid to design um, and eight is a common number i usually don't use uh, a grid to design i know like my students like to do it because they're used to this like print system but i could yeah. do it without doing it, having one <laughs> with all the xd guides it depends on, I guess, what platform you're going to end up utilizing your app and such on. Some developers use a, something called Bootstrap, and that comes with mm -hmm. a grid. And then the the developers want you to use that grid when you're designing, because that's how they're going to develop it. It just depends. The square grid's really good when you're making icons or doing some like detail work, and you want it all to be sized. Um, but yes, we do have the ability to use grids and rules and uh, layout columns in XD, and that is helpful when you're in the design phases. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Paula. I just like to use the XD guides that pops up. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, so moving on to our buttons, uh, button components. So I want to make this into a component as well, because buttons are repeated um, a lot. Is the screen get it? Getting stuck? Can it's you guys see? Stuck. It's just when it comes through a screen share, sometimes it gets a little blurry because it's being connected that way. Okay. Uh, Dumpty, I'm going to send you a link that goes into more detail on grids, so you can try it out on your own computer um, and and test out you know what grids look like on your own screen, so you can see it in more clarity. Thank you, Jamie. So uh, buttons is a great one to use as a component. And I'm going to make, grab these two and make a component out of these. And you see, I have my instance of a component. And here I'm gonna use something called a padding. Um, 
So this is how you could uh, use the flexible width as your system with components. I'm going to create a padding. And now it shows, you know, what's the padding around the text area. And that is forming the rectangle, the button shape. And if I make the longer label, I'm just going to copy and paste. You see that the button uh, just extends. So the padding is kept consistent. Uh, another important thing is to look at your text alignment when doing this. So if your text align is to the left, your button will extend to the right. And if you have it to the center, you'll see, I'm going to do another copy. It extends to the sides. So when you're using your alignment, when you're designing, make sure uh, you use the alignments you want. Yes. So just um, to reiterate, you use padding here, right, Paula? Yes. So Josh V had a question too about how the button scales with the, the, the text. Just, could you just show real quick again, like mouse over where padding is in the properties panel, just like kind of make a circle around it. So do you guys see where Paula is in the properties panel there? It's about midway through. It's a checkbox called padding. And that is how you're going to be able to specifically size and adjust those pixels. So you can see she has 7, 33, 5, 34 there. That's how she's adjusting the pixels around that text. So just wanted to clarify where it was again um, just for folks so they're following along. Yes. Thanks, Paula. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and then now we're going to think about another state, which is a hover state. So hover states are usually on uh, non-touch devices that you can see, uh, which is like a desktop website. And you could, this is a preset state by XD, which is here. Then I'm just going to leave it a hover state. And a hover means when I put my mouse on top of it, change looks or styles. So. Um, and change it into a pretty color, not so pretty, but and also change the text color to white. And when we put this back to the default state and do a desktop preview, you'll see that there's a hover effect onto the states. And this is really great uh, when you're designing websites, landing pages, you know, you all want to replicate the experience with uh, prototyping. And you don't even have to prototype anything with these uh, preset states in XD. And then I'm going to create the Wi-Fi symbol using the icons for. And this is one of my secrets I use when I create icons that I want to interchange them. So I start by uh, creating a grid like uh, Jamie said for icons. So I predetermined how big I want my uh, icons to be. So since it's like, let's do it by 80 by 80. And I usually want them to be rectangles or squares. And then when I quit, uh, do a search called Wi-Fi, icons for design gives me a list of Wi-Fi icons from uh, well-known uh, icons. So there's an awesome, which is like a font uh, that has icons in them. There's Feather, Ionic, Material is the Google um, one, and then there's Metro and Open. And I like the awesome one, so I'm going to use the awesome Wi-Fi icon and put it on top of the rectangle. And I want to make sure it feels uh, snug in the rectangle when I'm making an icon. So to make it uh, grow on all sides, I am holding Shift and Alt at the same time. And then I'm going to lock this so I don't squeeze the icon and make it a 70. Now here, I'm going to make another component with this as my icon. And I'm going to right click and make a component. And now that I have a main component, I'm going to go in there. And I only want to see uh, my icon. So I'm going to remove the transparency on the rectangle. 
And you see that because that rectangle is there, these icons are still 80 by 80 and uh, the grid will uh, break if you add any other icons to it. A use case I will use this is when I'm also testing out different icons that I want to use. Uh, so in this case, I, if I want to try the material Wi-Fi icon, I will add a state and use a new state and I'll write alt. And then I want to go double click. So I click on the icon itself and I'm editing my master or my main component. And I want to put my material icon in there in place of the iOS or the font awesome. And then I want this to be 70 as well. Oh, no, I have to group these. Uh, I'm going to turn off responsive resize. And then this way, I could look at my designs and see if I like the this Wi-Fi icon or my alt Wi-Fi icon in this use case. So uh, let's start creating components on our components panel so they could be actually used. Uh, we already created uh, three components, which is our Wi-Fi icon and our button. So we're going to put all this together. And because I want a source of truth, uh, I'm not going to uh, use these main components. So let's first add the colors uh, to our assets. So to add a color asset, I just have to come to our uh, assets panel and add plus to the colors. And you can see uh, that all the colors have been added to our panel. And if we want to do like use design tokens, we could double click and rename our components. So I'm going to write text for this one. Let me make this white one. Uh, the same thing happens to the text uh, character styles. So I'm going to click on the heading and the button component and click on the plus sign on the character styles. And you'll see that Acumen Pro 17 has been created in the character styles. So this having these uh, keeps all your character styles consistent and make sure you don't have like 20 different type sizes and you know fonts. Yes. Hi, Jamie. Oh, hi. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say you just pointed out exactly the right thing. I'm going back to that question about why would I need to save my stuff if I'm just making one little thing? You mm -hmm. can see Paula has already made three components and she's just working on a single graphic card. And she's already used three components to make that, right? Um, so I just want to point out that it doesn't matter how big or small. Components can be as small as an icon, like the Wi-Fi icon, and as big as an entire template, like maybe a module, right? An entire module. So we have already so many things that she's saved in such a short time making just a small card. So I just wanted to reiterate, like, um, the importance of doing this so that you can have consistency. You can reuse these things again. Um, you don't have to recreate it every single time. Um, you're going to see as she starts to build this out, you're going to start utilizing it more and more. Yes. Yeah, great. No, good job. Great. You're doing awesome. <laughs> I'm going back to the chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now let's try to create this card with these different elements. Um, I was sometimes create this, but let's copy this background card. So I want to uh, not take these, but I just want to copy these on here so I could, uh, you know, always go back here and change my main components and uh, reuse them. If they go into your design later, if you have multiple cards, you're going to have a hard time finding your main component. And uh, it's just, best practice to keep your main components separately from your designs. So now I'm going to show you a trick that I love to use in my cards. 
So there is uh, this uh, feature called uh, Stacks in Adobe XD, and it allows you to set the spacing consistent between your items. And you could do this by horizontally or vertically. So uh, I want to do this vertically. So I want uh, my star favorites and my Wi-Fi to be on the same level uh, vertically. So I'm just going to group these. And by grouping these, um, and then I want to put my Wi-Fi icon, my button, and I want to set the spacing between these so these are consistent. So I want, I'm going to group it as Apple G, right click group. And then you'll see right on top of padding, there is a feature called stacking. And then um, you see that uh, there is a line on this line, which is the all spacings value. And I want, um, this means the spacing between the elements vertically. And I want them to be all eight points apart. So by doing this, uh, stacks all, you know, organizes your spacing, and also it will let you change the space uh, with the consistent spacing between your elements. And then for another padding uh, experience, remember I didn't really care about the size of the uh, container. That's because I'm gonna use padding on this. Uh, I think for carts, the spacing around the elements is more important than like having the consistent size. Well, both are important if you're using a grid. But I'm going to make this a component. And I'm gonna click on padding. And you see here like uh, the top is 10, the right is minus three. So I'm gonna make this all 12. And, and you see how like the card resized based on the padding uh, for this card. So this is, and here, this is how we create a pattern that we could reuse and reuse. So here is my card and I named it. And I could use this come here and then uh, I could just double click and I say, oh, I wanna see the other Wi-Fi icon. And oh, and then when I do the desktop preview, you are able to see all the um, pro animation you did or state animation you did. And these are uh, yeah, components within components and it'll bring your uh, animation that you made to the main component, the small component, even in patterns. Mind well. blown, mind <laughs> blown. We had two questions you just answered, Paula. One, can you nest components? And you yes, just you can. That, yes, <laughs> so we had the Wi-Fi icons a component, the star is a component, and then the card itself is a component. So if you updated that star I, a yes. component, right, that icon, it would also update on the card, which is pretty cool. So yes, you can. The second one is states. Like, why do you need component states and what purpose do they serve? States are basically different variations of an element, right? So we talk about this with buttons a lot, right, Paula? We, you know, especially on desktop, you might have states that are disabled or a state for accessible design or, um, you know, there's all different types of reasons you would need different variations of something. And instead of making those separate components, you can bundle them in one. So that's one yeah. use case. Another reason you need a state is for what Paula just showed us with the star. You can actually animate them. So we have an on and an off state of that star. And we used that component state to make that interactivity between those. So I just wanted to verify, uh, to just, clarify, you know, nesting components and then states of components as well. And you can see in Arium how complex some of these component states can get. You know, when we look back at what Paula made for Arium, holy cow, you can use components and states for so many things, but we're just looking at the basics here today, guys. This is just real basic, real rough for the demo. Don't worry about the design. We know it's not super perfect, but 
This is just to give you an idea yeah. of the basics of how they work. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you, Jamie. So from here, I want to show you like how to make a design library and how to access it on another file. So to do that, uh, you see you have your design system here. And uh, to publish it, to be able to use it on another file, you have to publish it. So when you click on that icon up there, you'll get these libraries and you get to see all of my <laughs> libraries. And then when you click on publish, now this becomes uh, available for other uses. So now it's publishing, it's uploading. And then I'm going to create a new file. And you saw that on the publish uh, that you could share with you know, anyone that you want and you could give them, you know, edit rights or view rights only so they can't, you know, edit your design system. And when we go to our new file, I want to go to my document access to find my library. And then you see, you see a link and I, I could go to the components demo and I could bring in the cart that we just made and you know it'll be updated with everything and when i go back here and change this dark color again it'll tell you to republish the library so i will update it now you will see you know uh, the button turns blue saying there is a change in your element and then when you, where's my update button? How, where's my update button? <laughs> Wait, so it's blue link. Yes. Are you on the document assets or are you in a library? So go back. Uh, I need to go, go to the back, document. Document assets. assets. And then it'll tell me yep, to update there you all. Go. Yes. And if you look at your components, if they're linked components to another library, it'll show you what's a link um, icon. And lastly, for sharing, um, you could always create a link for a design review with uh, any stakeholders. You could do a development uh, where you could create a link. And share and when you open this. You can see the prototypes, and then when you click on an element, it'll show you what colors we're using, what character styles are you're using, uh, which is super helpful for development. And Okay. Okay. I, I don't want to hate interrupting you, Paula, but this is, I'm getting such great questions about what you're doing. This one was about, do you need to make a design system every time for a project? Uh, I definitely like to make one because uh, it keeps me consistent or else like when I design, I will have like 20 different type sizes and styles and different buttons different colors. So this keeps me like grounded on having not too many options and, you know, having consistency. No, my answer to this was a little similar, but different. I make a mm -hmm. library for every project. I save everything in the assets panel, but I only really work about, worry about a design system where I'm going as far as documentation and mm -hmm. sharing with developers and things like that. When I'm starting to collaborate or sharing with developers, or it's going to be actually something that's made real, then yes, absolutely. I try and make sure that I have a documented design system. Design systems are more than just design elements on a page. But if you look at that link from Spectrum that Paula showed at the, us at the beginning, it includes a lot of documentation, code snippets, all of those things come together with it, right? That's yes. a lot of work. That's a ton of work. 
So yeah. I would say, depending on your project, definitely save and reuse components and make components in a library. But as far as a fully published design system, you know, it depends on your working use case. So yeah. very similar to what Paula said. Yes, I save my type styles, I save my colors, and I save my components in the library panel. Might use a library over and over again. Um, but as far as going that far, it depends on the project, right? Yes. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time. So you need someone, some executive buy in for design system if you want to spend that much time at work yeah. creating <laughs> documentation. There are people whose job it is just to like, um, you know, do design systems all day. So it depends yeah. on what we want to do. All right. Thanks, Paula. Yes. So, yeah. Um, that is kind of all I had for today's uh, webinar. And great. Well, then let's do more questions. They keep coming. Yeah. People are loving this. Oh my God, <sighs> Paula. Okay, Paula. Yes. From Kristen. They want, she wants to see more about the interactive animations for prototyping, right? So, Kristen is curious about maybe you can go back to your auto animate example or something mm -hmm. like that. But the answer is essentially, yes, you can make inter inter interactive animations in XD. And Paula, yes. maybe you can just show really quickly back an example of Arium, how that works. So here's Arium and there's a desktop preview. So you could uh, animate all of these. So these are using states as an auto animate. So if I click on favorites, you see like the carts move right and left. And uh, this is done in this single page and it's a different state and you are animating between states. Um, so yes, there's a lot of prototyping that we were talking about components and design systems today. We may need to come back to Design Lab for a whole new section on just all of the various prototyping capabilities in XD. But um, yes, you can do scroll groups, overlays, auto animate. Yeah. There's tons of interactivity in XD. Okay, cool. let's take the next question, Paula. More? <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Kristen again. I love this question. Where in the design process do you usually create your component library? Do you start with the basics and then add things as you come up and as you need them? So like, you know, a lot of people who are learning, as you know, Paul XD, they're starting from zero, right? They're yes. making something from scratch. So where in that process from zero to a full product, would you start building your design system and component library? Uh, I used to think after I was done with my visual uh, designs, but now that I'm working on another project, I realize I'm on the, still on the wireframes, but I am doing a lot more animation screen by screen. And now I have to make components that change like at the same time. So I could, I don't have to go into like each screen to change my wireframes to a design. So beginnings of an animation or when your visual designs are satisfactory is when I will start creating my design system or components library. Right. Your own, you're going to be saving components along your journey all the way around. And you might delete some. You might be like, yes. oh, I didn't end up using that. That was a mess. You're going to be using the component functionality states, animating between states as you're building. When you get to a point, like Paula said, where it's turning into something that's pretty solid, then you're going to want to go back. It's never really done. You're going to be documenting, <laughs> right, fixing, tweaking, changing things all the time as you're making and evolving your products, right? And you might have a system that's just for wireframe elements or, you know, different mobile mm -hmm. things. And it's all about your own approach. But the key is to utilize them for your benefit. Um, they're there to keep you consistent. So in the early stages of a design, you make a card that you like or a button that you like. If you really want to explode some developers' minds, then make buttons that are all different sizes. I promise you, you're going to have a developer <laughs> that's head is going to explode. You pass them a document that has five different button sizes on it and they're all one pixel off. 
that is the best way to, you know, create, you know, some minds exploding <laughs> out there. So you want to make sure that consistency is established early on in the process. Yes. Okay. Um, new question. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. There's, there's some talk here. I think Paul, you have an interesting question. When you share for developers, can they inspect the UI, right? Um, they, he's saying like, you know, he's tried this before. Some of the measurements change a bit. So Paula, maybe we go back to that uh, browser view. So when you share your designs with the developer, this is how it works in XD. And Paula's gonna show you again here. I can pull up that link. Oh, I must have closed it. You might go back to share mode, sorry. There we go. So we have the ability in XD to share for developers and it does give them um, the opportunity to inspect. So click if you click on stuff in the artboard there, Paula, see how you get those specs, Paul? That's how you're gonna find out those measurements. This is where developers' minds explode. So you have to be a good designer. If this isn't supposed to be 44 and 35, you better make sure that's aligned and straight and in the place that you want it so the developer can, can look there and make the right decision when they code it. So the answer is yes, you can inspect um, in XD um, and your components. So design systems are built on the foundation of components icons, colors, atoms, molecules, mm -hmm. and such, right, as we're growing this into a more complex component. So um, this is where you would share it with a developer and they would find all that information and then create this in the code. And if you want to take it a step further, you would then document this like we did with Spectrum. Yes. Anything else you want to add to that one, Paula? No, I think you answered that perfectly. <laughs> Okay, here's a question for you, Paula, from Veronica. Um, can you integrate XD with Illustrator or Photoshop? Yes. Great. Yeah. You could um, always, if you drop an image, you could always edit it. Let me bring an image in. And here's my screenshot. You know, it is part of the Adobe ecosystem, right? So yeah. what's really cool um, about XD is that if you have things like images, it is a vector-based tool. So from Illustrator, you can copy and paste back and forth. You can open Photoshop files in XD directly. Just drag your Photoshop file onto XD. It will open it in XD. Um, and then now Paula's going to show you here. She just dragged in like a screen. Yes. Even if you like get one from like a a plugin, like any old image, you can edit mm -hmm. that in Photoshop. Yes. So this was really uh, easy, uh, but if, and if you want to import any Illustrator files, you could import straight, and then they will take your vectors and make it into a screen, an artboard for it, and Photoshop as well. All right, so I think we have, I don't know just how much more time we have. I'm gonna quickly shoot down some answers in the chat to a couple of these questions. Um, you know, I think we've answered a few of these um, about the process, you know, of making your design system, how you make it on the, you know, either on the go or as you're going, how it evolves and changes as the maturity of your product changes. If you're, st if you're gonna go work at Mattel with Paula, you know, you might be inheriting a design system that already exists yes. to make things. So this is definitely a career skill that you want to be aware of, you know, how components work. You're going to come in at Mattel on your first day and you're going to get handed over, you know, several uh, XD systems to start using. So it's important for you to really understand the basic concept that we went over today. So we do, we could probably go for another 15 or so minutes. Okay. Um, for sure. The, the call technically is on folks calendars for 90 minutes. So okay, great. we have time okay. for more questions. Um, okay. So let's answer some of these. Um, Eleanor, um, there is an issue with color profiles in XD compared to other applications, but the output should be correct. This is something that will be resolved in a future update. So please keep your XD up to date for that. It's going to come in the future. 
All right. Um, let's see. Okay. You know, there's a specific question from Vivian, and she's been at home struggling with this, Paula, and I think we should help her out. She okay. wants to have a button that has an icon and text with Patty, and she's having trouble getting them to work. So can you show her how to add, like, maybe the star next to that text and then put the padding on and show how the padding would expand and contract with an icon yes. in a button? I'm going to ungrip this, this and is then I'm going to... Honestly, you guys, when you learn UX and UI, you are going to make buttons. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. like, really? Yes, you are. <laughs> You're going to design so many buttons. So let's just do it. Let's just look at it. So to do that, you're going to place the icon next to the text, and then you're going to group it. So make sure this is one item. And then you could grab the container and group it and add padding to it. And then because there isn't enough space on the top, and I want to make it consistent. Oh, it's not consistent at all because of the the numbers is not visually consistent, but you can I make it visually like consistent that way. For the, for the <laughs> change. No, you might also call it on the text if you have that set to centered, you know, mm -hmm. or left or right. It depends. Like so, you know, the text. So this is centered. Have, right. So maybe make that right. So if you want it to get shorter on the right side, then you need to make sure it's left aligned, if that makes sense. Yes. All right. Now like I'll try that. to change it. Let's see what happens. See? Do you see how that works? Vivian, my girl, <laughs> you see it. So basically the star and the text is a group, one group first, mm -hmm. then you make the shape for your button and you group that together. Then you just make sure that the padding is turned on, the checkbox is checked in the property inspector. And if you change the length of that text, I would say if you just want it to get shorter, you want that icon to stay in the same place, make it left the line, and it will change the length of the button. I hope yes. you got that, Vivian. I know you've been struggling with it. Um, okay, so prototyping. Somebody is curious about how do you copy and paste and maintain the prototyping mm -hmm. functionality from one screen to another? So this is, so. okay, that's from Natalie. You know what, this is kind of weird. I ain't gonna lie. How do you copy something and maintain the prototyping functionality you already created when you paste it in another document, for example, Paula? If you don't know the answer to this one, I do. <laughs> I oh, totally I do. <laughs> okay, good. You have to be in the <laughs> prototype mode uh, okay. to do that. So when you, let's say I, want to prototype this button to go to this page. Oh, but they look the same. So I'm going to change the background color. Background color. So it's red. So when I play this and tap on this element, I go to the second page. So I want to create a new artboard and at, on the prototype uh, panel, I will copy and paste this and you see how this line also followed me so when i do this uh, it'll prototype the same way so you do that with like the five nav uh bar if you have a nav bar on the bottom does that make sense did i get that right jamie yes yeah, so you have to okay so you prototype you have a prototype you have these three screens if you want to carry over those wires to a new document, you have to copy it in prototype mode and paste it into a new document in prototype mode. Yes. If you paste it and you're in design mode, XD is going to get rid of all of your wires and you're going to be like, why? Why is it doing this? It, it, it's, it's trying to understand what you're trying to achieve. Some people want to bring the wires over. Some people don't want to bring the wires over. So you really have to make sure you're copying and pasting from the right area. So if you're copying from the design mode, you're not going to copy the prototype wires. So when you paste that in a new document, those will not come along with you. So if you want prototyping functionality to be copied someplace else, you need to copy it in prototype mode and paste it in prototype mode. Yeah. Yeah, man. 
Um, Deanna, I think we talked about this one about different libraries the base based on size, mobile, desktop, iPad. Um, Paula, you know, it depends on the project. Would you, that's kind yes. of what we decided, right? But uh, also Spectrum has two different sizings for desktop and mobile. And that's because on a desktop, you are using like a cursor, which is uh, a lot smaller than a finger. So um, that's how kind of they differ based on experience as well. Right, right. Okay, um, let's see. Let me go back to the chat. We have tons of resources in the chat, by the way, you guys. So go back and open those before the event is over. However, I don't know if you, let me just type this out for you in the chat. There is one main link I think you all need to have. And it's adobe.com slash learn XD. Okay, guys, a lot of the stuff I posted for you today is going to be there in learn XD. Um, so make sure to use that and when you're trying out XD for your course, you're making a project, you're doing something for your portfolio, um, you know, definitely look into that. Um, I know we went over a ton of information today about best practices. Here, maybe I'll just come back on video here, Paula. I think we're pretty close yes. to finishing up. <laughs> um, you, you know, we really wanted you guys to understand the value of components. I know as you're learning that this becomes overwhelming and you're thinking mm -hmm. to yourself, like, why do I need this? You know, why am I struggling? When you're trying to make things consistent, when you're trying to make your designs look good, start saving these elements. Save yourself the time. Like, Paula, if you had to change, see how many times she has this card used? It's on there at least <laughs> eight times. If you had to change that card, would you want to change it individually eight times? No. No. No <laughs> one's signing up for that. So change it once as a component, yeah. a main component, and have it change throughout your design. So it's stuff like that that's going to increase your design velocity, mm -hmm. the way how fast you can design, the speed at which you can get things done. Um, I know it's a lot to take in, but we really wanted to make sure that you understand the important you understood the importance of components and how you can use them in XD. So thank you, Paula. I, we got so many great questions. Thank you, everyone, for all the engagement. I mean, I couldn't even keep up at one point with answering all the questions. I hope everyone got a lot of value out of this session. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you. And I just want to pop in, I'm going to throw this in the chat one more time. So for those of you who are design lab students, um, whatever course you're taking, if you've already started, you have access to your subscription there in that top link. Um, there is a free Adobe email course, which if I'm remembering correctly, Paul. Yeah, and guess who did that course? Yeah, <laughs> your so resident teacher in the house <laughs> created that course. So pop over and take it um, that, like I said, it's free. Um, and then if you are not a student and you're, you want to learn more about Design Lab, the process and everything, please set up a time to email with admissions. Um, this recording will be sent out automatically. So everything Paula just walked through, you can revisit and rewatch. <laughs> Make sure you nail it because um, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, and that includes like answers and questions uh, over in the chat. So, this was yeah, great. thank you so much. We'll connect with us. Please connect with us. Let's yeah. talk more about XD and good luck, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Paul, for all the information. Thank you, Jamie, for helping to facilitate and answer questions. We appreciate you all for coming so much. Have a great rest of your week and weekend. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.